Yo dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. Lucamus Prime here, so it's time for the next episode of a movie that didn't need a sequel. And in today's video, guys, I'm going to be covering this time an example of a Disney animated movie. And this is back in their 2D era, known as, of course, the Renaissance era. And this is one of my all time favourites by them. And it's probably the best example of when they actually had the guts to go dark and do it in an amazing way. Because this film, which I'm going to be covering, which I think did not need a sequel, is none other than 1996's The Hunchback of Notre Dame, based on the book of the same name by Victor Hugo. So, you guys probably wondering what do I think of this film? Well, as I said, this was back, of course, when Disney had, had the guts to go dark. And I think they did a really amazing job because I absolutely love this movie. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. And is, in my opinion, one of the greatest Disney films ever made. With a really amazing story following, of course, the hunchback himself, Quasi Mordor, who is, of course, the confined bell ringer of Notre Dame. And his yearning to explore the outside world and make sense into, into society against the wishes of his cruel foster father, Judge Claude Frollo. And, who, and he, of course, wants to exterminate Paris's Roma population. And... Claude Frollo is also one of my favourite villains in animated movie history. Probably one of my favourite villains of all time. Because he was absolutely terrifying. He terrified me when I was a kid. And he even terrified me to this day. Especially when I rewatched the film recently. And he's easily one of my favourite role of Tony J. May he rest in peace. And I do not imagine any other actor playing the role of, of Judge Frollo better than Tony J. As far as I'm concerned guys, he is Frollo. And I think he really nailed it in this film, gave him a really terrifying performance. And there's also great songs in this film as well. Especially, of course, Hellfire, sung by Frawler himself. Definitely one of my favourite Disney villain songs of all time. Oh, of course, my number one favourite always will be Be Prepared for the Lion King. That is my favourite Disney animated movie in the Renaissance era of all time. And this film, of course, has an amazing ending because... Because after, of course, the confrontation with Frollo, which, which leads to his death, where he falls into the molten lead. Definitely, of course, an example of where the film went dark when it comes to Frollo's defeat, of course. Quasimodo gets saved, of course, by Captain Phobos, uh, who is, of course, forced by Kevin Klein in this. He did a really great job uh, playing Phobos. And Quasimodo accepts Phobos and Esmeralda's love. And they encourage Crossy Mordor to leave the cathedral, which he does. And the people of Paris hail him as a hero. So right there, Quasi Mordor gets what he wants, where he's recognised by people of Paris as a hero, and he finally gets to leave Notre Dame. And Esmeralda and, and Captain Phobos get a happy ending as well, where, where they've of course um where they've course um you know accept their love for each other, of course. And Esmeralda's also my favourite wall of Demi Moore as well, absolutely. So right there, guys, that was an amazing ending, and I did not see any signs of sequel baiting whatsoever in this movie at all. The film just ended perfectly fine, just as the book does, of course. However, unfortunately, despite this great ending, six years later, we got a sequel. And this sequel was unfortunately released direct to video, just as many sequels were to the Renaissance era movies for some reason. And this sequel, of course, was none other than... 2002's The Hunchback of Notre Dame 2. Oh my god. So, after we watched the first movie, I then w went on to watching this sequel. And going into it, I did not hear good things about this sequel because I, I know many of my friends hate it, but ranted about it. And many people I've read reviews for, I've seen and seen reviews for, they have complained about it as well. And Upon seeing the film, I definitely think it was rightfully so they complained. And, of course, when I when I looked at the movie, I, I also saw that the critical reception was also mostly negative. And you know what? I, I, I'm not surprised whatsoever. Because when I saw this film, guys, in my opinion, it was absolute trash from start to finish. This is one of the worst animated films I've ever seen in my life. And it's also, in my opinion, one of the worst animated sequels and, and movie sequels in general that I've ever seen in my life. 
it was just total trash. And I just think it was absolutely horrible. And I think the worst offender of this sequel is, in my opinion, it completely disrespects Victor Hugo because he never wrote an actual sequel to Hunchback of Notre Dame. The only thing he worked on after, after making a book was a script for, for, for a play, but loosely based on, on a book called Light Esmeralda, and that's it. He didn't write a proper sequel, so... By doing a sequel to, to, to a film based on one of his books and never even had a sequel to begin with, I think they were being really disrespectful to Victor Hugo. That was just really stupid in my opinion. I couldn't believe he did that. So, and what happens in this film is Quasimodo returns as a main character once again, but in my opinion, they really massacred his character because I think this film was only made for the people who were disappointed that he, he didn't get a love interest in the first film, but... The problem is, what is that's completely missing the point because the first film was never about Quasimodo having a love interest. It was all about him escaping Notre Dame and finding his place in the city of Paris among the people who were living in it. It was never about him getting a love interest. It was only about four boys and Esmeralda finding their love for each other. Quasimodo, of course, wanting to, to find his place in, in the city of Paris and wanting to leave the cathedral, which he does get to do at the end of the first movie, and to, to me the only movie. But yeah, and this sequel is just absolutely horrendous. And what's also worse is Quasimodo himself is literally the only character from the first film to actually have a role in this film because those who come back, like Esmeralda, for example, are horribly underused. They barely appear whatsoever and get anything to do in this film, which is really stupid. Like, I couldn't believe it, what they did with this sequel. And also as well, I also think it was also, in my opinion, really badly paced because this film was boring as hell. And what's ridiculous, guys, is this is also one of the shortest films I've seen which is animated because it's only 68 minutes. Not even like 90 minutes or 100 minutes or, or, or longer than that. 68 minutes. And in my opinion, it was a complete waste of time. Literally one hour and eight minutes of my life wasted watching this absolute trash. Like, 68 minutes of absolute torture. Because you guys are also going to be asking me, was there anything good about this film? Well, I, in my opinion, there was absolutely nothing good about it, in my opinion. Nothing whatsoever, because it was an absolute disgrace. Like I said, in my opinion, it disrespected Victor Hugo, and it ruined Quasimodo's story from the first movie. It also wasted what others who came back apart from Quasimodo, who returned as a main character. And it also was well introduced to a character called Zephyr who befriends Quasimodo, and personally, guys, I found him very annoying, and what's sad is, is he's voiced by Haley Joel Osment. So, yeah, that was just really stupid after having had him wasting his time with this poor Haley. I felt sorry for him. But yeah, this film, in my opinion, was an absolute joke, and I also wasn't really a fan of Sir Rouge, the villain either. He was so inferior to Claude Frollo, in my opinion. Claude Frollo, in my opinion, was way more terrifying and scary than, than Sir Rouge, in my opinion. And this film, just in my opinion, was a, was a total joke. It disrespected Victor Hugo, and it just completely massacred the characters who, who returned. Especially Quasimodo and Maul, because he gave him a love interest for no reason. Yeah, this film was just, in my opinion, absolute trash. One of the absolute worst sequels I've ever seen in my life. Because, compared to the 10, 10 out of 10 that I give this incredible movie from Disney, I give the absolute piece of trash director video sequel a full-blown 0 out of 10. Because I absolutely hate it. In my opinion, nothing could redeem it. Nothing. Because it was absolutely horrendous from start to finish. Like, I, I don't even know what I was thinking making this film. I really haven't got a clue. So, long story short, guys, as far as I'm concerned, there can only be one Hunchback and Notre Dame movie. Just one alone, and that's it. So, what I'll do in the future, guys, is I will only ever re-watch my Blu-ray of the first movie, and to me, the only movie. And there's no way in hell I'm ever going to buy a sequel. Absolutely not. I flat out refuse to buy it, because I think it's absolute trash, in my opinion, and it's just horrendous. And I don't see any reason why I should, I should ever own it in my life, ever. Screw it always. Absolute garbage, in my opinion. In the future, guys, I will one day post a positive review for this film showing pure love for it because I love this movie. As for the sequel, it's, it will probably get a mega trash talk. I think it's one of the worst films ever made, in my opinion. Just absolute trash. 
And what breaks my heart is the animation company that made it are the same company that made my favourite show of all time by my animated series an animation. And that really breaks my heart. They had to be used in this. And in my opinion, the animation looks so cheap and trash, in my opinion, compared to the absolutely beautiful an animation in this film, which was stunning and holds up to this day. The animation in the sequel was just so cheap and horrible. So you screw it all away. And I can't believe it dragged in the company that made my favourite uh, show's animation as well into it. Oh, goodness me. Long story short, guys, I mean, in my opinion, there's only one Hunter I can Notch Dam movie. So, you know, drill, guys. Um, this is me covering why, in my opinion, Hunter I can Notch Dam should have said one movie alone and did not need a sequel. So, you know, drill, guys, be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure to leave us in the comments what you guys think of Hunter I can Notch Dam. If you see, do you need a sequel on the comments below, what you think. Also, be sure to join Team Prime by pressing subscribe for this coming future. If you would like to be a member, you can just join using a piece of the article description, and I'll see you all later.